Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you have a camera that has a zoom lens on it, here I have a Canon camera with an 18 to 55 millimeter zoom on it, and you wanna take a picture, the natural instinct is just to zoom in to make things uh, appear closer in the picture, and that's absolutely fine, as long as you understand what it actually does to the rest of your picture. So if you want to know how to use your zoom lens correctly, if you want to zoom in like a pro, please, let me explain. Okay, so I've come out here into the garden and we're gonna take an excellent picture of my model for today. That's teddy bear on a chair. Now I want you to observe a few things. In the top uh, left-hand corner, you're gonna see a red bucket. And in the top right-hand corner, you can see, see my snow shovel, which is kind of that bright golden color over there, bright yellow. And here in the middle, we have the teddy bear. Now this is me zoomed out as much as I can so I'm as far away as I can, and let's just take a picture to see what that comes out like. Okay, now, the normal temptation at this point, if I wanted the uh, teddy bear to be more in the picture, would be to zoom in. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Now, notice what's happened. The red bucket and the golden sh uh, snow shovel are much further uh, to the corners because the frame, the background, has been shrunk in. Now, the teddy bear, of course, is bigger, so we can take another picture there. And then finally, we can zoom right in. Okay, and now we're just about getting the chair in and the teddy bear, but the red bucket and the golden uh, snow shovel, the yellow snow shovel have disappeared. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom right back out again. And now I'm just gonna get a bit closer. So between halfway between me uh, and the, ch the teddy bear. Now, see again here, obviously the teddy bear is much bigger. The chair is, uh, or much more fuller in the frame, but notice the red bucket and the golden uh, snow shovel, the yellow snow shovel are still there. Okay, now if I zoom in, what happens is the same thing, the red bucket and the snow shovel have gone. I'm not fully zoomed in, but yet the teddy bear is fairly, fairly big in the frame. Okay, and if I zoom in all the way now, okay, I just get the teddy bear, don't see the chair, and I certainly don't see the uh, the snow shovel or the uh, the red bucket. Now let's go in a lot closer again and let's take it. Now look at this, I'm right up close. I can't, the chair isn't in the frame. The teddy bear is very big, but look in the background, the red bucket and the snow shovel are still visible. So now I can take a picture and the background is much more visible. Now, why would you wanna do is if you're taking photos in somewhere that's very beautiful, you've got an excellent backdrop, you don't want necessarily to lose it. Even if you're um, you know, gonna use a bokeh effect or something, you still don't want to lose that texture and those colors in that background. The moment you zoom in like this, you limit yourself. And look, in this particular case, what I've got, I've just got the kind of the brown grass here because the snow has only just melted and there's really been no fresh grass growing yet. So whereas it'd be much better to close in as close as I can. And look, I can still see, look, peek in there, that shovel, okay, and the bucket's now uh, blocked, is there, the bucket's still there, and I can still get the face of this teddy bear in full frame. So composition of your photos, how you're actually doing that, how you actually uh, set up your photo is very, very important, and the zoom is an important part of that. Okay, so let's just quickly look at the science of that. The reason is this, when you're zoomed out, let's say 18 millimeters, you have a wide angle. That means there's lots of information, lots of picture captured on the left, and lots of information captured on the right, as we saw in that video with the bucket and the snow shovel. And the moment that you zoom in, what you're actually doing is you're reducing the angle, the field of view. You're reducing it to being much narrower. Now that has the effect of bringing in the objects much closer, but you also reduce what can be seen on the left and on the right. So basically, if you want to keep the scenery, the context of what you're taking the photo of, you need to keep the camera at the widest angle possible and zoom in really as a last resort. So as a rule of thumb, move, don't zoom. Now, of course, there are a couple of occasions when that's not gonna be true. For example, if you're taking pictures of a sporting event, you can't move into the middle of the field or into the arena to start taking pictures of people close up. You're, you're not you're gonna be thrown out. It's just not gonna work. The same with wildlife. You can't spook the wildlife by getting in too close. So there are times when zoom is absolutely essential. And there's also a time when you might want to use zoom to increase the bokeh effect on your pictures. And I'll talk more about that I'm planning a whole separate video on bokeh, so we'll deal with that there. But uh, other than those two uh, exceptions, really move, don't zoom. 
So I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Now we're really trying to build the community up here, so it would be really useful if you subscribe to the channel and if you shared this video with your friends and on social media. Also, please do go down into the comments, tell me what you think about the video and what other videos you would like to see. Now I'll see you down in the comments and I'll also see you in my next video.